Hello, everybody. Today is June the 20th, and I am John Blank, Zach's chief equity strategist and economist. And today we're going to go through a second part of our work in basic materials. It's about top stocks in basic materials. Obviously, this is the place for all of you who are looking for stock investments. I would tell you that uh, by and large of what I review today, this is more of an investing lecture than a trading lecture uh, that might change with the rate structures going forward. But right now, a lot of these stocks have sold off and the dividend yields are extraordinary and worth talking about. So part one will be profit metrics. We'll go through the profitability of these companies to show you how supported the income is for these stocks, the earnings for these stocks, and the valuations will be part two. Part three, we'll just talk about the agribusiness stocks, which are a separate set of stocks, and we'll go through the major tickers and the major stories in that area. So let's get going. First off, I want to point out that, as usual, this is the views of John Blank, myself, PhD, and not necessarily the views of Zach's investment research. Please read the rest of this at your leisure. Okay, so profit metrics. We've got a lot of different ones. Um, and we'll get some balance sheet ones as well. Uh, first of all, we'll go through earnings margins. Then we'll talk about forward 12 months earnings in absolute terms, free cash flow adjusted margins, earnings retention, which is the amount of that's retained from uh, not paying out dividends, and of course, dividends per share. We'll also talk a little bit about the balance sheet as it relates to this capex to total assets and total debt to total equity. Let's get going. All right, earnings margins on a forward 12 month look. Okay, so these are the top basic material stocks by market capitalization. So we're not only talking about the very business or big ones. At the top here, we have chemicals. And over here, we have the non-ferrous metals, the malleable metals, the non-iron ore metals. Down here, we have steel, steel. And over here, we have paper and packaging. So keep this in mind. Again, let's go through this one more time. Chemicals. Metals, non-ferrous, steel, and paper and packaging. So over here, we have a few tickers I want to point out. APD, that's the orange line. That's air products and chemicals. It's an industrial gas, polymer, and performance materials, and it has a 2.4% dividend. So very strong earnings margins here. LIN, LIND, it's a UK-based specialty industrial gas. We have a number two ranked uh, on this stock right now. For short term and a B for value and a B for growth. Lynn will appear to be a very strong stock. All right, over here we've got Barrick Gold, largest gold mining company in the world with a 50% uh, earnings margin. So over here you've got you know things between the 30s and 40s. This is 50% for Barrick Gold, only a 2.4% dividend, but a very high uh, margin. Up here, you have Franco Nevada with an 84% earnings margin. Just incredible. So down here, steel is a very much a lower margin business. So you got STLD, Steel Dynamics. That's an A for growth and an A for value with a 17 EBITDA margin. Nucor, which is a North Carolina-based steel maker, A&A. &A. And commercial metals, which is based in Texas, now number two, B for growth and A for value. So lots of growth and value down here in the steel area. Over here, Mondi PLC, based packaging manufacturing, 6.3% dividend. These generally, the papers in the steel have about the same operating margin. So you can do as you can see. West Rock down here, 3.7% dividend. So down here in the paper and packaging are where the income earnings are quite dramatic for people to pick up. And we'll talk about more about that today. But as you can see, we did the supply chain surge and now we're coming off and down. So this is the typical pattern you're gonna see in the paper industries. It also plays out in the steel industries. Not so much for these two groups. Chemicals and non-ferrous metals have a very different story. So keep in mind, these are the supply chain stories. To some degree, chemicals is, and then not at all is the metals and not ferrous. All right, earnings mar just forward 12 months. I just want to point out these can, you know, these are just absolute numbers. So you can see that these are in the billions. 
and they are different over here obviously they're the bigger numbers but what we really want to get into in this slide is more of the names shinetsu chemical that's this one right here the green line of course doing quite well dna air liquid a i q u i y this is a french company and it also has a nice looking earnings chart so now we've had lind air products and chemicals we've got air liquid and we've got shinatsu now here's something called ecolab this is actually probably a little different business as you can tell from the earnings chart a very different story bhp group a uh, big interesting story here for the basic materials 5.65 percent dividend at bna glencore six and a half percent dividend a and a for long term so again, 5.65 and six and a half dividends, really worth looking at those stocks from an income perspective. FCX is Freeport McMurran, that's the copper play, and you can see that has actually been doing quite well and coming back a little bit. Down here, of course, we've got Valet and ArcelorMittal, along with Nucor and Steel Dynamics. So Valet actually is a super strong earning stock. You can see everything kind of rolled over on all these stocks over here, much like this, like we talked. Over here, we've got Smurf and Kappa, 4.5% dividend. International Paper, 5.8% dividend and a B and an A. And Store Enso, which is over in Finland, I believe, that is a 4% dividend. So these are all selling off. You can see they come down as soon as the Fed started rate hiking rates. So the question is, when the Fed stops hiking rates and these things roll over, is this a good time to pick up these dividends? Very interesting place for all of these areas. So just use these slides to get a hold of the names and the tickers and the stories. It's really going to help out in your investing choices. Free cash flow adjusted margin. So again, I just want to point out what non-ferrous metals are. There's no iron content. These are the over here, the aluminum, cocker, lead, zinc, and tin, as well as gold and silvers. They are malleable. These are not. So once again, here we've got Free cash flow, Lind is at the top here. BHP, Glencore, and Rio Tinto, really strong. Look at those free cash flow uh, charts. These are really doing quite well. Valet is actually too, it's rolled over a bit since the R&R peaked a year or so ago, but still very strong stock. So one, what you wanna point out here is free cash flow. These are strong operating businesses. So they do support the dividends. These are paying particularly Glencore and BHP. Uh, very strong stories. You want to look at these. And Lind is just a stock that's been on a momentum run for some time now. Down here, we've got a company called, you probably do not know, ticker SUZ, Suzano. It's a Brazilian producer of eucalyptus pulp. Um, this is the blue line, and it, it tends to show up as a very strong, uh, profitable stock. Over here, we're going to add a few new names, NPSCY, that's Nippon Steel in Japan, and PCTKX. That's POSCO, the big steel producer in South Korea. Over here, we've got Southern Copper, SCCO. Again, 5.3% dividend, really strong dividend. So once again, pointing out just how strong a dividend you can find in this material space. All right, earnings retention. This is also known as the plowback ratio. It's the percent of net income a company keeps after retained earnings after dividend payments. So it's it's the opposite of the payout ratio. This is the retention. So we just want to look at retentions of cash and see it, how much people are. For example, international paper plays out that big dividend. They do a 50% retention. So half of their cash goes to paying dividends. Sometimes these are quite, you know, they're usually up to 50%. Lind is 47, Ecolabs 48, 49, Dow much lower at 32. Franco Nevada, 63% earnings retention. So just crazy how much money in the market and they're keeping it and they're growing it. So Franco Nevada is a very different story. Uh, keep these in mind. All really that's value here is what I've circled in red for you to look through earnings retention. Dividends per share. These are expressed in absolute dollars per share. This is not the dividend yield. So but what we want to see is that dividends per share going up are, are quite strong. So this is a, just a nice place to understand, for example, their products and chemicals. Really nice increase to their dividends per share. These are what you want to see. What you would worry about here would be sort of like this one. 
PKX, where they've cut POSCO, which they've cut back on their on their dividends per share. That's over in South Korea. Belay, similar story down here. So there is some change to the dividends per story for these steel producers, not at all for the chemical producers, other than Shinetsu, which is the Japanese one. And here you can see once again Rio and BHP really doing a nice job with their share share at an annualized level for dividends and also the dividends per share at an absolute level. Really strong story over here. The the stories of the dividends per share for like IP. International paper does look actually quite good. Look, they've cut a little bit back, but it's been very strong for most of the time. But international paper is very interesting income stock right now. CapEx total access. A CapEx ratio, which is not quite what this is, does increase the amount of CapEx over sales and increase will suggest future growth. So if there's more CapEx to total assets, I would assume also there's more future growth. Susano is an example of that. Air products and chemicals up here and FCX in this area. That's, but on interesting stocks and stuff for over here. So I would just pay attention to the trend when you see it. And if, if there is a nice one, there's something to be looked into. Total debt to equity ratio. How much debt a company has compared to assets? A high DE ratio may have a hard time covering its liabilities. So again, you just don't want a high one. So ECL would be your worry here. Southern Copper would be your worry here. WRK would be your worry here. And Nippon Steel would be your worry here. So again, just a just a kind of a worry factor slide. Okay, let's get on to part two. Share valuations. First off, I want to point out we're going to talk about the peg ratio, all important peg ratio, price to pre-cash flow. Book value and enterprise value to unlevered free cash flow. These are our four main valuations. Of course, as we're talking about these income stocks, dividend yield to the U.S. Treasury, the 10-year U.S. Treasury, key factor here, and net cash to market cap. We want to understand these together. We want to understand how they're paying out people or income producers. So first off, the PEG ratio. Once again, we got a new stock here. It says BASF. This is a number two ranks up with a 5.3% dividend. There's Air Products, Lind, Air Liquid, and Ecolab. And you can see, obviously, they all did the shutdown thing. And now they're basically in peg ratios around two to three. BASF is actually the one that's most strong. Again, you want a low peg ratio. Those are the where the values are. And over here, you can see a lot of different stories and over here again a lot of different names that sue's name is actually under one interestingly enough ip is 2.7 actually kind of high and over here you can see that the real value uh names are in these steel stocks because they have some growth steel dynamics nucor and the others so keep in mind again i circled in red what's really important here the peg ratios themselves then go back in through the charts. So what I would tell you is first look into these and then come back. Obviously, you can see a lot of noise in some of these charts. These is charge for chemicals a lot, lot better for getting the narrative. Price to free cash flow. Again, just want to point out the actual numbers are what really matter here. And you're going to get a lower valuation stock. Uh, probably those are your value stocks. So again, it's never going to be a team play on these things. You're going to have to look through all these slides. But if you're looking for valuations and low prices, you know, here again in this area, really strong things for Glencore, BHP, and Rio on the valuations of this group over here. All right, enterprise value to unlevered free cash flow. Again, it's really all about the numbers and the absolute better valuations. I would, again, start with the numbers and then work back to the slides. A little different pattern this time around than most, but that's how I would do it. Book value per share. Okay, obviously, we'd like to see rising book value per share. If you're worried about these packaging container cup paper companies, look how they're doing. Book value per share, very strong. These are value stocks. You got to keep these in mind as price targets over here. Very interesting to do that. Lynn, phenomenal run. $83 book challenge for share. Stocks way higher than that, but it's really an incredible story. Um, all these ones, look at this. The, the steel makers are now $70, $80 a share in book value. Incredible stuff. Over here, these are actually quite low. BHP is the, probably the 
and Rhea are, the, are the, again sticking themselves out and making themselves noticed really quite clearly. Want to check out all these stories and later on, but you can see for yourself that for the most part they're all quite strong. All right, dividend yield to the ten-year treasury. Again, this is something where you would want to see something over one for the opportunity. And again, IP at one five, Rio at one seven, BHP at one five, Malay at one three. These are where you're going to find super nice strategies for finding income plays. Um, be careful to look into the entire story behind the dividends and how they're doing. But again, looking at it from most perspectives, you can make more money than the fixed income space, even when the rates have gone up. Keep this in mind. This is why we're talking top stocks, because there are elements in these areas that are unexploited by investors. Net cash to market capitalization measures the liquidity and financial stability of a company. So if a company has a high cash to market cap, that consider is stable. Now, again, in these areas, we're just looking to make sure that we don't have some kind of big blow up here. Is an example of what happened in the shutdown period. You can see these types of, of contractions really hurt certain areas for a while, but now they're basically coming back. All right, part three, let's get through the agribusiness stocks. I've got three slides here only. And we'll, again, we'll focus mainly on the names of these companies. That's really what's important, and then we'll move from there. First off, financial metrics. Earnings forward 12 month. I circled again the names and the absolute measures. Then over here, we have free cash flow adjusted margins, earnings retention, and earnings profitability margins. So down here, depreciation, amortization, tax rates, we're going to ignore this. Focus on these four profit metrics. So number one, we've got SQM. That's the Society Kamika Minera Chile. There's an 11% dividend in stock in A and B. It's the world's biggest lithium producer. Only thing you have to worry about, and you really do have to worry about it, is it may be nationalized. So I'd probably stay away from that because of the, the nationalization issue. Bunga, BG, uh, it's a global with an 8 P ratio. You can see it has a nice pattern. Very different than these other stocks we'll talk about. This is a you know all the way integrated agricultural producer, but it has a very strong story, and you're going to see it come up very strongly, and that's worth knowing. The other three are fertilizer stocks, Nutrien, CF Industries, and the Mosaic Company. CF is an A for growth and an A for value. Keep that in mind. Very strong stories. They all kind of rolled over in 2022 with those stories of the um, change in the peaking and then the opening of the economies. But again, for the most part, super strong names. Look at the Nutrien CF right here in terms of their free cash flow and adjusted margins doing super well. So here and here, the EBITs and the free cash flow adjusted, it's really good stories. Down here, you've got the margins, and you can see they're kind of rolling over for these groups. But in general, strike, strikingly strong. Other two are international ones, WLMIY, Wilmar International, which is in Singapore, and Yara International, ASA. But this this stock is a 12% annual dividend. Worth looking into this. You might want to ask yourself, what is ASA? That's an advanced subscription agreement. An advanced subscription agreement, ASA, is an instrument where investors prepay for shares of the company. They hand over money, but receive their shares when they are issued at a future funding round. So YRI is one of these ASAs. 12% annual dividend. I don't know enough about this to tell you what else to do, but worth investigating from here. Okay, so the financial metrics, all this is stuff to look into. I would just focus over here on the book value per share. And again, BG comes out on top. Bunga is a very different business than the others. Don't compare them clear through, but Bunga, Nutrien, CF, and this Chilean company, they're all, everything really is doing quite well in the book value, but BG, Bunga should be singled out and kept in mind. All right, so finally, We've got the dividend yield per share down here. Again, the SQM comes up so strong because of that 12%. But there's other plays in here uh, to think about. Uh, and keep in mind that all this stuff is just helpful to figuring out the whole story. I would say that this first slide, where all the names are, is where you now to start to just get a hold of what's going on in agribusiness. We talk about the sector a lot. We don't talk about what, what's in it. Basically about fertilizers, but there's many, many more things. And also, 
point out that the Chilean company is the world's business, biggest lithium producer. Susquehan does have an electric vehicle play. Um, I don't know how many more of these, these fertilizer companies can break into the, the lithium business for electric batteries, but it's worth thinking about how that might actually play out here. So that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this. A lot different story, as you can tell, than last time we got a big picture. Now you get into big stocks and you see that this really is a different world out there. A lot of the story has to do with this income and the ability to earn a big dividend. So give me a call, 866-794-6065 if you want to get hold of these slides. Once again, 866-794-6065. Send us an email, strategycall at zaxpro.com. Get us and find us on the web at www.zaxpro.com. We also have a LinkedIn page at Zax Professional Services, and we're on Twitter at, at ZA Tools. Great stuff for people, underserved and underlooked stories. Uh, this is where you can find good trades right now. Good luck, everybody.